So, transcription is the process in which um, your DNA molecule is transcribed into something called an mRNA molecule, which stands for messenger RNA molecule, well, messenger RNA, which can then be stored or used as a template in further replications. But before I go into some detail, I'm going to discuss some key terms. So the first one is alleles. This is the variant form of a gene, which can be dominant or recessive. If you've ever seen a Punnett square before, you'll know that a dominant gene is shown by a big capital letter, whereas a recessive one is a lowercase one. You then have phenotype, which are the observable characteristics of an organism. So, for example, um, you may have blonde hair and that is your phenotype. But if you have blonde hair, then it also means that you have a genotype. Being blonde is actually a recessive trait, so your genotype can only be BB if it's shown by a B. Um, this is because the genotype is all the alleles of an organism. Whereas, say, if you had, I think it's brown eyes, brown, brown is dominant. That means that your genotype can either be B, big B, little B, or big B, big B, and you'll have brown eyes. Whereas if it's two lowercase Bs, then you won't have brown eyes, you'll have, say, blonde eyes. Br blue eyes, not blonde eyes, sorry. <laughs> Um, the next term is exon. This is a component of DNA and it stands for all the coding regions of DNA. And then you have introns. Introns are non-coding regions and these aren't actually present in any forms of bacteria. Uh, that, that means that they can replicate a lot faster because these non-coding regions don't have to be spliced out of replicated DNA. Before you can actually start transcription, there's something called a transcription factor that helps initiate it. This is done by positioning the enzyme RNA polymerase at the promoter region of the DNA that you want to replicate. It also aids in the pulling of the two, helical, he, the two strands of the helix apart so that it exposes them to the enzyme. And it also releases the RNA polymerase from the promoter region. And you're probably wondering what a promoter region is. And this is a section of the DNA that specifies to the transcription factor where to start transcription, the direction in which to transcribe, and which strand to read. An example of one of these promoter regions is a non-coding section called the tartar box. So, on to the actual stages of transcription. The first one is initiation. This is when the enzyme DNA polymerase binds to the promoter and starts to unwind the helix. You then have elongation, which is when the DNA polymerase moves from the 5 to the 3 prime end of the DNA template strand, forming mRNA. Third and finally is termination. This is when the enzyme reaches the termination site and reaches the newly formed mRNA molecule. I know it's important to remember that this is actually an exact replica of the sense strand and apart from the fact that the T bases are actually U bases, which is uracil. So here's an example. And here's a bit of a simplified diagram of the process, um, excluding the next stage, which I'll get onto in another video, and also including of the post-transcription modifications which occur, which I'll also go into another video on. But you can see here that there's a lot fewer stages in prokaryotes because they don't have them in troms. And last but not least for this video, I just want to talk briefly about a bit more about some things that can occur in termination. So there can be two types, which is row-dependent or row-independent. Row-dependent row involves a row protein which disassociates the RNA polymerase and then allows the RNA template to move off. Whereas row-independent is when the new RNA forms a herpin to displace the RNA polymerase and then stops the transcription. Just a little bit of extra throw-in about termination.